Hi. Okay, my name is Marjorie Eaton, and um, I met John Roger on a Sunday evening, October 25th, 1975, at the Miami Round Table Festival of Lights. There was workshops all day and guest speakers every night, and he was the guest speaker for Sunday. I did not know MSIA, I did not know John Roger, I was just a yoga teacher um, sitting with one of my students in the auditorium and this young lady comes up to give the invocation and then everybody starts chanting Hugh. As a yoga teacher and meditation teacher, I was so used to different chants, I had never heard that chant before. But I went, oh my God, that's, that's, that's God energy. That's the God energy. I recognized it instantly, even though I'd never heard it this lifetime. And then I was riveted. And then this little man came, sat on stage, and he proceeded to read every thought that was going in my mind out loud and talking about it. And then he started talking about the light and the stage kind of disappeared and then it was just like this ball of sun in the center of the stage. And from there he led us into a heart meditation. So I went into my heart and promptly left. I, I usually, when I came to, I hadn't opened my eyes yet, but I heard like hundreds of church bells going off. And then I knew this was Jesus Christ. He'd been reincarnated as this person. And when I opened my eyes, he's gone and everybody else is gone. So I got out of the auditorium and I walked through the hallways and I'm looking for him, I'm looking for him. And finally one hallway, he's coming towards me down the hallway with an entourage. And he stops and he walks catty corner and he comes over to me and he says, yes, can I help you? And I stood there absolutely frozen. I couldn't move a muscle, I couldn't speak. I was so awestruck. And I'd follow him anywhere. I mean, I was just like, I couldn't say anything. And he kept repeating, can I help you? And then finally he says, your aura leaped out at me, what do you want? <laughs> I still couldn't respond. And. So then he started to walk past me, and as he got shoulder to shoulder, whatever it was broke, and I panicked that I would lose him. And the people behind him came up, and one of them came over, and he says, I give seminars at my home, here's my card, I'll be there Sunday night. And, uh, not Sunday, Friday, the following week, which was the night before Halloween. So I went again, I sit, you know, cross-legged, yogi style, went up. Knew this was it. The following night after I heard what went on in the seminar, I was by myself, it's Halloween night. I'm laying on my bed and I very carefully try to call in the light to say the words they said. And I was deep in meditation it was stormy outside, it was, uh, the wind was blowing, I had the air conditioner on, and I remember inside of me spinning, it was making me dizzy, so I moved in the sense of a spin and wound up with my feet, my face, facing east. And then I heard this loud sound like a choo-choo train in my head coming at me and this tremendous circular light coming in, and I went out. When I came back into my body, everything was peace, quiet, not a sound. The air conditioner had cut out, the storm stopped, and then I was again recalling Jesus Christ calming the storms, you know, out on the boat in the stormy deep. It was four years of me worshiping JR as the new Jesus the Christ, because he's trying to teach me, you know, 
this is, this is just love him don't worship him and it was quite a bit longer before I knew what was the overshadowing of the Christ and then when somebody becomes the Christ or uh, the Christ within comes forward within somebody but J.R. had said that there is a difference Fifth, nineteen seventy-five. Wow. And then my first conference was out here. I stayed for two weeks in nineteen seventy-six. The conference of charity. Mm. So go on. Tell me, Jarrah said there is a difference between the overshadowing and the the there is the Christ within, which is like a guest, and then there's the indwelling Christ. It's always there and the Christ essence is right here in the spiritual heart it's a direct connection here with the soul like this mm -hmm. and he said when the indwelling Christ if when the Christ within you can't tell the difference except one goes one is always present nice there's a loving each day that I love that I tell people to do is take your burdens and cast them to the Christ inside you and let yourself be free. Yeah. That would be the indwelling Christ. No? Um, I like when JR says in the charts, the Christ is on all levels. That's correct. So is the traveler. Right. Christ traveler. John Roger, Jesus Christ is all one inside of me. I agree. It's like there's no separation. One, it's the Lord, it's God, it's all the way yeah. in that oneness. That's right. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll hit different subjects. Okay. So we'll go backwards. Uh, what's the, you know, I read the Bible tons of times. I've read scholarly books. I'm so exhausted, but, and there's more to read. What's your, point of view or what's your experience of the tabernacle or the upper room I, I started to investigate it it's 50 days after he he, he transcended or, or he showed himself 50 days it's called the day of Pentecost yeah. and I believe that was it's celebrated in all the churches and yeah. I May something. Yeah, it was the end of May. I believe it was three Sundays back. May 29th, yeah. I think yeah. I looked it up. And that's when it took place. And these little graces happening, little things that uh, reveal something to me. And I had gone out on my uh, porch patio off my office upstairs. And in the corner of it, I have one of these uh, garden type of uh, container gardens and it's got a bougainvillea in it and some other things. But when I looked carefully, I had totally forgotten there was an Easter lily planted in that day, an Easter lily bloomed. So the serendipity, there's like all these sometimes coincidences happen. And that was just another one. As far as the tabernacle, that would be like the Holy of Holies. I would look, I, for me, I would say that the upper room is in soul consciousness. It's in my soul. It's one with every soul. It's it's this divine loving light and sound in you know, oneness because the awareness is that we're all in that upper room. And then on the human level, people then express from different levels below the upper room, which could be the rest of the temple or it could be out in the courtyards or it could be, you know, in the marketplaces. 
as an exp you know as an example. Um, and you you read, obviously the book that I'm just trying to get through is John Davidson's. I read that many times. The gospel. I really like how it just. It sounds current the way he brings that forward. How he breaks it down, yeah. and in a more metaphysical, which is the J.R. metaphysicalness of it. You can get the religious. I'm Catholic. You can get the the literal, or you can get the other levels. The other levels. Yeah, I used to have a lot of experiences when I was younger and early on in the movement, and I couldn't explain it, and I couldn't find it anywhere in any of our literature and MSIA. Right. Um, one example is. I had an experience where Jesus was like really close and I went up to him and he had a flaming heart and then we just embraced and I went into the flaming heart and then there was no more of either one of us. I never heard JR talk about anything like that. I went looking and would you believe I finally found it in Catholicism book where they talk about the sacred heart of Jesus and they have flames coming out of it. So, I probably, I'm going to back up here a little bit. You can speak a little louder. Yeah. Too. When I was growing up, my dad was old Dutch reform, which is way out one end, and my mom was Christian science, way out at the other end. And I was always having these inner experiences with the Lord and seeing the Christ. So when I was 18, and I met my husband to be, he was Jewish Orthodox. So I got very involved. I studied. I learned to read and write Hebrew and speak it. Kept kosher. Um, I found that in sharing with my Rebbe, who was also mystic, I was very mystical at the time. I would be today what they would say, studying Kabbalah. It just was something that was always in her that I knew. And it set me on a path of, who did Jesus study with? So at first was researching all the sacred books, other things that weren't in the Bible. And learning from him inwardly. Because from the time I was a little girl, when I would go to sleep at night, I would have this twilight zone where I would have a vision, and there was the Christ Lord like this. And I would go up, and he would enfold me, and I'd go in his heart and fall asleep. It was the greatest loving I had ever known, um, right up into my early teens. JR gave me my first initiation on a retreat in Florida. I was telling him about it, and he said, Marjorie, that was the mystical traveler. That's been the greatest love of my life, this whole lifetime. And that was probably one of the first awareness keys that I had. I've been with the traveler in other lifetimes, because I recognize the sound curve. And the Traveler Christ was always with me. And so my focus was like, JR calls it limiting focus to bring it in like this, what you're going for. So I would study, I would read books on either sacred texts having to do with the Christ, having to do with Jesus, sound current, Anything and everything that John Roger wrote. And for decades now, I've been primary researcher in the John Roger Library, where I learned a lot more. I got a bibliography of about 130 books on the Christ I've already read. But I'd say it was about four years ago, five years ago, I got inside, stop reading the books, it ain't there. 
<laughs> and so I read my discourses, all 12 every month. And one of the last little books published by John Roger is Living Love Book. And I would read one chapter every night before I go to sleep. The next night, read one chapter before I go to sleep. A chapter could be like two, three days. And when I get to the end of the book, the next night I would start all over again. That's been going on for three years. It just becomes more and more profound. What it does is it keeps me like living here and now with people. I do a like a JR kind of thing where I get, I've been doing it for years. I get the book, I get books, I leave them around me and then I go to sleep in, in the near vicinity. Yeah. And then I let spirit tell me what the experience of what's in the book. And maybe I dabble in it, uh -huh. but I'll let, I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll let the night travels and the traveler take me further in. But I, I do the same thing with discourses. I'll read a little bit, pass out, and take off. I love it. Back in the um, early 90s, I think it was about 90, 91, around there, up till then, I had been very also clairvoyant, um, besides clairaudient and sentient. And it all stopped. I no longer saw the travelers inside. I no longer saw uh, the Lord Christ. I didn't have spiritual experiences and very little dreaming. And I went through a period of maybe two, three years that's when my hair started to turn white. Uh, being afraid, uh, not knowing what was going on. And slowly I began to learn that I was being taught by JR to love nothing. The no thing. Which is everything in a sense. And I did have one session very early on with Michael afterwards, and he did tell me, he said, I was relying too much on the inner visions that I was seeing and the inner things, and it was keeping me from going higher. So it was taken, the abilities were taken away. So that was like around 91, 92. Uh, what is that, 20 years ago? I don't know. So from then on, it's been every day learning. How do I love more this day? What do I do to love more? How do I share that? Maybe it's not saying a word. A lot of times it's don't tell people what the answer is. Don't tell them how to get through it. Love them through it. Share with them. Don't take the karma away. There's such a gift inside once they get through it. I've had some pretty um, interesting lessons. <laughs> what, um, what, can you remember one or two experiences with JR of just that one on one with him that you can speak about? That you go, wow, I learned this from him and I can share with others about? Yeah. Um, Part of my love of the Traveler Christ is right from maybe 87, I started facilitating travelers through the ages. So um, I was doing the last few weeks with Kathy Jeffries till she died. So I had a lot of correspondence about the travelers with him as well as um, sharing with him. Ooh, that's good to know. And one of the things that came forward was I was very aware of an energy frequency. Um, there was a solid thing like this that I identify as this is this is the traveler consciousness, and all these other forms of the travelers through the ages, they had different energies. Uh, when John and Jr. were 
working together, sometimes on the stage together. They had different energies, but as soon as the spirit overcame, I could tell the difference between John Roger, J.R. energy, and the traveler John Roger, the preceptor. It was very different, very profound. The same thing with John. Um, I wrote J.R. about it, and he told me, and this is important, mystical traveler is one consciousness in all of us. That's the mystical traveler consciousness. The various mystical travelers through the ages is how the personalities qualifies the energy coming through them. So, which is why having been with JR so long and uh, working with the travelers through the ages that I was so aware that you could have multiple travelers at the same time. You could have group travelers. You could have one, two, or three. So when Johnny came in, it was like, well, that's perfectly natural. So when I, I just recently, I play six seminars every night. Yeah. Not only that, I've been doing that for years. And JR talks about the traveler consciousness is just there and then along comes the person jr yeah and he try he walks along and he goes right into it and now he's the traveler of consciousness and then uh so i thought that was a great explanation of it and you really put it together uh, and travels to the ages i recently played some sharing of jr with kathy jeffries oh yeah and they were hilarious people yes. loved it oh yes they're they're the not for sale uh, seminars are just nice little seminars and uh, and I recently when JR died I did Travels to the Ages for the first time and I picked JR before it was ever on the list yeah I mean who's gonna fight who's gonna fight me on that <laughs> and so I picked um, Phil Danza did too and it was amazing I had always known about Travels to the Ages never took it so wow. it was great to take it wow. and pick my traveler Wow. And loving all the other guys because... That's right. You know, they're all part of the whole. That's right. So I, I dug in. I really appreciate the work that you and, and Kathy, I started to learn that, uh, you know, but it's great. So the correspondences between you and JR were amazing to set the class up. Yeah. Then we started putting a book or a syllabus together from my experiences in the class. And Fantastic. I would write, JR, this is what happened. You know, like there is a lady at one point and she was doing her presentation and she's okay, now I'm going to bring forward speaking through me and she names the traveler and this other energy came in that I did not, it's not the traveler. And I stopped it and I said, no, share from your experience. You yeah. can talk about it. I immediately wrote JR and he says, no channeling. I love it. You know, so it was like things came forward in the syllabus as it is today I out of what, those correspondence. I love what Jared said, it roughly says about channeling. He said, you never know who you're going to channel. They might be less educated than you. <laughs> well, entities <laughs> and, come through. And, it, and had they learned, had they known, they won't know any better on that side if they didn't know anything That's on this side. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Well, I just finished facilitating... Um, I heard this last Travels to the Ages was amazing. I did it at Prana. I got back in uh, early February. I get things inside. It's a do it. It isn't anything I hear. It's an intuit uh, inspiration to facilitate a Travelers through the Ages residence in Prana only. Okay, so Pranaites. <laughs> Pranacism. I get it. And to be sure, I got. I asked residents from the East Wing, West Wing, Prana West, and Briggs, so everybody was represented. Nice. And at the time, having so totally into this upper room, the one accord and harmony and the spirit of what we've been working with this year, getting ready for conference in the fall trip that's been canceled, I wanted to hold that focus, but have not just me, all of us, in the class holding the focus so we had 10 ladies one had dropped out and we actually were able to do three 
classes when through the COVID-19, we were told uh, we could no longer meet anymore in a class structure. We had to be on Zoom. And during that time period, we also have to now social distance six feet apart and wear a mask. So I, I, I did the mask. And then I realized once we got into that, nobody's allowed from the outside to come into Prana, so non-resident staff work from home. They don't come here. And there's about 12 of us staff who are residents that are doing all the odd jobs. You know, vacuuming Prana, I, I clean in the kitchen scullery, doing the dishes now. Scullery, it sounds day. like you're on a ship headed to Australia. Yeah. Scholar. So we're sort of like, we are holding a tight ship and everybody's doing their part and it's beyond what you were assigned to do. Now you're doing all these extra and, but the energy and prana just soared. Yeah. And the most amazing part of it is we know Jesus was a traveler. We know John Roger was a, tra a traveler. We know John Rogers basic self was Daniel. We know that um, he was John the Beloved. It all became one. So we had two people in the class doing Jesus, two people in the class doing John Roger, one person doing Daniel, another one doing John the Beloved. <laughs> And the others were all in supportive type things that were almost identical. It was amazing. It, it was like, instead of this, we were all holding a focus that went like this. And constantly sending love, love between all the buildings, all the people, and holding it and sending it out into the planet. It was the most amazing class. And because there's no separation inside of me, um, up till this class, all the classes, I only did Jesus the Christ. Year in, year out. Every 10 weeks was a different lesson. One 10 weeks, you're learning about the resurrection. It would be simple, intense, and profound over 10 weeks. This class, I did both Jesus and JR because they're one inside. And uh, we were all one accord, our whole class. Um, we shared deeply, different people went through very deep processes. We didn't want the class to end. <laughs> and the most important thing about Travelers Through the Ages that sharing like this one-to-one -one with JR is did not want the classes to study history. It's not the point of it. It's to find the traveler inside of you. Know that traveler inside of you. Embrace that inner master in the divine loving, and you become one in it. So a person says, I pick this traveler, and it's sort of like, mm hmm. The mystical traveler consciousness brought forward the perfect personality that is going to mirror you, whether it's through culture, background, the things you do what karma are you working through right now how does it reflect who you are to you in your here and now daily life so that you don't get caught up in the past historical events but it's a do it now like you're very very much in tune with john roger jr is a part of who you are it's a here and now so other than the movie that you've already done, I strongly suspect if you were to do a new movie or write more books, it's a here and now process if you and JR were to do it together as one. Yeah, I think I'm going.
done. Like, uh, I, have a, I had a similar message when I was finishing my second book. And my PT's the alternate third book, it's finished, you know, the PT. Oh. So I published it, but the second book, JR, comes on the day of my birthday last year and hands me two books and he's like, you're done. And so that was it, I was done there. I was done in acting, I felt that. Uh -huh. I'm just, I feel done. Exactly. And so now it feels great because I'm in the nothingness as well, I do feel. I was like, I'd rather just disappear, which is, I would never, ever, that would never, you would never know that that would be coming out of my mouth, which is, uh, so if I, if I said something to you, like JR told me when I said, who's going to take over MSIA, what's going to be the future of it, who's next, who's the next traveler, and I remember JR saying, and I don't know the exact wording I said, but he said, it's the ministerial body, does that ring something inside of you? The ministerial body is all of us, which is we're all that we're all that traveler consciousness. That echoes a seminar that I heard him do at a challenge retreat. I think it was 1998, like October, November, December, something like that, at a Silomar. And Jesus is now one with JR and Jesus is the one talking. And he talks about, quote, what is the church? And literally he talks about the souls, the people and the spirit and the traveler and almighty God and the church are all of us as the sons of God. Mm. I could probably find that for you yeah, yeah. to get it exact, but I was there and I remember it so well because when it was complete, JR had that tape played back over and over and over during the seminar. And he would say this one word and all the souls, the sons of God, as an example, and he would do a little mini seminar on each part of it. It wow. was extraordinary. Wow. Extraordinary. So wow. it echoes exactly what you're saying. Oh, he told me. It was like, I was like, wow. And then as. That's the upper room. That's the I, membership. I realized that that's the one accord. That's all of us. Yeah. 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 So. Is there another story you'd like to contribute? Because I think we're coming to... Uh... Now, I keep wanting to ask you about the Enoki, and I'm asking, and, and Jer, I keep getting spirit to ask you, the Enoki, when Rama was talking about the Anaki yeah. or the... Yeah. Is there... Are you, were, Did you... Because it was interesting, because if you were with Kathy Jeffrey and you were diving into all these travelers, that must have been incredible to know all these aspects of the traveler consciousness that these that it used in these personalities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm jumping everywhere because I said the Inaki so is there something with the Inaki and is there something with what JR intended for the travelers to the ages I never heard him refer to the Inaki I did read the uh, Bob S the uh, Zachariah Sipchin books where it goes into detail about it, and that's what is the people from the 10th planet. It's this huge thing that's coming closer. Uh, we revolve around the sun with these other eight, nine planets. This other one has a revolution like this, and so it comes around rarely, but it has a great effect. And then science, in the last five years, have become aware that something is out there big. Yeah. And the Sumerians, the, uh, a lot of literature uh, coming out of ancient civilizations, say like in South America, over in the Middle East, over in the Far East, all have very similar beginnings, all have some similar hieroglyphics or teachings. point in 
couple of directions. One of them would be the Anaki that came mm -hmm, down, mm -hmm. that weren't exactly the most benevolent. Right. And the other is the colonizations that took place that came out of Lemuria. Lemuria, yeah. And you saw the stuff with Beverly, and so JR said, oh, this looks like Lemuria over here. Yeah. At university. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting because I spent time in Santa Barbara, you know, and of course we were up there at Windermere a lot. But I found lately Santa Barbara to be very peaceful and fun to break out, break Santa into. Barbara. Like I break out of LA. Yeah. So you break out of this bubble and you go into this amazing bubble. I love Santa Barbara. In just 90 miles, you know. Yeah. And I probably was one of the ones that came out of, you know, the area. Yeah. Anyway, um, Lemuria, hundreds of thousands of years before it ever sunk, sent out colonizations, ten of them around the world. Um, there's one that was done where approximately the Hopi Indians are today, down in South America, around the Pacific Rim, um, Japan, Hawaiian Islands, Easter Island. Um, pre-Egyptian area where the Egyptians are in that country. They, um, they weren't really, really physical like we are, semi-physical, but they were very high spiritual beings with very high spiritual teachings. And James Churchwood who was an archaeologist and scholar back in the 1930s, had gone to Tibet and a priest took him to one of the caves and they found 10,000 of these green tablets um, that he transcribed. And it was all about the history of Lemuria and the things that they'd done and what the teachings were. He's the one in the same cave that found the Rosetta Stone. Mm that they used to um, eight different languages they were able to translate. Were you into Egyptian, Egypt, Egyptian stuff? Yeah, I've read a lot about so it. So I'm gonna go to Egypt and okay. do a virtual reality there, a virtual, I like virtual tours and it's just perfect for COVID. <laughs> Like that's by the way, JR told me to do this two years ago, and it's perfect. The heart country. I don't have to take uh, people with me. I just take the camera, like I'm doing right now. Exactly. I upload it to Facebook, and then you pay me, and everybody has fun. Uh huh. Uh, no, no airplane fee, no COVID. Exactly. Uh, but Nicole ran into. She's in Australia, close north of Sydney, about an hour and a half, and some Aborigines have found a stone that dates back to uh, Kofu, a shipwreck happened in Australia. Uh -huh. And there's some uh, a stone with uh, uh, Egyptian writing Fair, on it. Yeah. So is, do you, have you heard, do you know anything that connects uh, Egypt around the world or it just stays in Egypt? The Lemurians took their teachings to all of these places. And one of the things they had basic bottom line identical to JR about the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God wow. and if the countries nations cannot learn to love and care for and take care of their fellow man they will fail and there was a lot of about what we would say today one accord and loving each other, loving your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. And the people in Lemuria, they called, they had a sound current, and the name of their god was spelled H U N. Wow. And that god tone isn't just ancient Sanskrit or Pali language. It's Everything. in the earliest languages all around the world. When the pre-Egyptians, before there was ever in Egypt, built what we call the Sphinx and those three great pyramids, 
pyramid spy and other mystical travelers through the ages. The Greeks found that statue partially buried and, and pulled the sand away and they gave it the name Sphinx and it translates, it means an enigma or a riddle. But the people who built it, built it after as a physical representation of their god Hugh. Mm. And the name of the Sphinx was called Hugh. And once a year, those ancient beings would crawl between the paws of the Sphinx and they chant Hugh all night long it's until the like sun what? came up. <laughs> That's what we did. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And. Well, you know, it's interesting because the Sphinx is so incongruent of anything else. Like there's temples, 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 temples. Oh, a lion with a, a head of a man. Yeah. Okay. So the reason that it was a physical representation on the um, grand procession, so that's like. 25 and a half, 26,000 years it takes our sun to go around the great central sun like this. Coincides with the preceptor energy for new creation. We've just been going through this end of one age into the new age, so it's like new creation. Mm. At that time, on the other side, there was not the constellations we see up there now. On this other side, there's different constellations, and one of them up in the sky looks like a sphinx. But beyond that, coming through that, is the sound current. So all the ancient civilizations have almost identical teachings. And that is how all of the creation of the planet and everything on it was done by sound. Everything J.O. has taught about sound and light has been in ancient civilizations. It's a part of it. And he keeps saying, these are not new teachings, these are old teachings. And they've been brought up to modern day times. And that's an example. So when I look at, okay, that's what happened eons ago, the building of the Sphinx that they called Hugh, and they, I share with you, and you got it, we crawled up between those before the sun came up, Father and we we're all Lord. chanting Hugh. <laughs> You're bringing it alive today, that way. And John Roger, I would like to say he's the greatest love of my life, but I would be remiss in that because John Roger is the greatest beloved of all my life. Yeah. Ditto. And JR is the personal one, the personality, the, uh, the guy in my life, the, the one I cherish. But when I say John Roger, this is. John, Roger, this is JR, this is the John the Beloved is one with him. This is the mystical traveler. This is the preceptor. It's like if I say John Roger, it's the whole caboodle. Yeah. <sighs> Love it totally. Well, I got a hit from JR. He's like, interview e Marjorie. And then I kept getting your emails, and, and then I kept hearing your, hearing him say, disturb her, and get the interview. So I'm really glad I pushed you and irritated you enough to, even during COVID time. You didn't. Time, you were very but, neutral about yeah, it. Enough. More like, whatever. But I was like, oh yeah, you know, with the whole COVID, you know, I do respect other people's prerogatives. Mm -hmm. I'm a maverick, and so I didn't want to, you know, disrupt anything that's happening here. But I'm so grateful that you came out. And uh, how I always finish the interviews are, is there anything you'd like to tell JR? 
the, 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 he's here. He's, we're two or more gathered. We're here. So like, and I like to record that. So is there anything you'd like to, not to, not to, not to not, I mean, we talk to Jared every day, yes, but I, I like to get it on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so is there something you'd like me to do? In here where the Christ Traveler, John Roger, is me inside, and it's you inside. And J.R., on one of the moments of peace, he says, this is love. This is love. This is where love dwells. And all of us who love are one. And yes, I know that we're social distancing six feet apart. If you go like this, and I'm going like this, go in here. Hold the beloved John Roger inside. Now hold me inside of you, and I'm holding you inside of me, and we're one. Experience that? Yeah. And I saw you and me at Benihana next time. What? Huh? What'd you say? I saw you and I at Benihana next time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a fan and so am I. Well, especially Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Or anything. You're looking real good, whatever you've been doing for Thank yourself. You. Chair marathons. I mean, I, yeah. I stay out of the news and I just take care of myself. I'm reading it every day, getting it on the prayer list. You're more, stu you're more powerful. Oh, yeah. Thank you for being the head of the prayer list person thingy. Can you explain... When, because I like the app, yeah, and I send stuff up. Can you explain? And I used to do the stuff with Jr. and me, and send it to you. So it goes into your the the suppository of is that the right word? It goes Years in, ago, we had yeah, tell uh, us. MSIA. Uh, website and you go in and you put names put on the prayer there. list yeah. and once a week they would email me that and, and that would go to the traveler no that would come to me got it and I had a master list of all the names and I would add those to it now nice. that ties it except because it was public there were people that would download all their address books with all the numbers and addresses and thousands of names then there would be the people that would do all the againstness and threats oh, against okay, okay. JR and then they're the ones that would mouth off with a lot of swear words. Nice, nice. So we cleaned it up. So basically I would have to clean up and go all through it just to get a name. So you're Google with a filter nowadays. So the next part of it was is we got a whole new web site in there. Nice, nice. And you type names in it, and it goes like, uh, to, to a mom. cyber whatever nothing. Cyber Nobody traveler. sees it. Gotcha. But on the MSI official prayer list, where hundreds of ministers who receive it confidentially, and they put light on it. There is one line that says all those names on the MSIA prayer website. Nice. Then there's two MSIA apps for prayer lists yes. that you use. Yes. And they have a name and both of those lines are on permanently on the main list and it says all those names on the app number blah, blah, blah. beautiful the reason I ask and it works I nobody know. sees the names and I it guess. works no no I know that the reason I ask is because we always want to use these resources I remember when Jerry had a phone tree yes so we want to use all these resources I have the same I have a, a bunch of ministers on whatsapp it's a group and we just say, send light to Marjorie Eden, boom, and it happens. Yeah. That's how we found uh, Lori Bullock. So those kinds of things. So that's creative. And then we can send things to Skylar if there's someone yep. that needs that. And then there is send light on your app or on the website. All of it works. MSIA.org. MSIA.org, and you can click on the prayer list there. That's the website, and then there's the apps. Thank you. If people email me, Eaton, 
at msia.org. I then take the name and put it on myself. Is it true that you were the head nun at the Vatican? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, at Corona. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I love you. Thank you oh, for everything, Marjorie. Oh, God bless you, I'm sweetheart. I'm going to give you a kiss right now and just give you COVID. <laughs>